So I am Sarah Olivieri. I'm a number one international best-selling author. I'm a former executive director. I am also the creator of the Impact Method, and I love helping nonprofits change the way they operate so they can thrive. And usually I'm talking about how you need to thrive because how quickly the digital age moves. But at this moment, it's also really important um, because things are changing right now. There's a lot going on. Um, and that is, uh, includes fear, but it also includes opportunity. So we're going to talk about how to move from scared to secure. And let me get my slides into play mode so that I can move. I found this beautiful picture um, and I wanted to share it with everybody. And just before we dive in, I want to just ask everybody to just take a deep breath, breathe in and hold it for a few moments and breathe out. Let's just do it one more time. Breathe in, and breathe out. The first thing that I wanna share with you in steps to going from scared to secure is that you need to center yourself. And yes, I've turned COVID into an acronym to guide you for how to make it to secure. And I have attempted to give you 19 opportunities that are available right now, but I only made it to 17 in my time prepping these slides. So we're gonna finish them off together. But in times like these, you kind of need to break apart the normal process that actually helps us get focused and move forward in a quick and effective fashion. And normally we don't have to center ourselves um, for, you know, necessarily. But when so much is going on, people are worried whether or not this is for just you or you're doing this with your whole team. This whole thing is going to apply for both situations. The first thing you need to do is center yourself. You can do some breathing exercises. There's lots of um, kind of body regulation, mind regulation techniques that I won't go into because they're available in other places. But I am going to share you with you one activity that might help you get centered in this time and bring your team together. So what I want you to do, and put this in the chat, is imagine all the time and energy right now that's being used up as you live through this pandemic. You might have time going to, if your kids are at home all of a sudden, you might just be obsessed with the news. It might just be distracting. The anxiety might be taking away some of your energy. Think about what that is and now put a number on it and put it in the chat or if you're watching the replay, put it in the comments. What percentage of your time and energy is going to this pandemic? 50%, 25%? Yeah, other people. For me, when I did this exercise, it was about 20%. I think it's gone down a little, 25%. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time that's taking up. And, and we need to honor that and recognize that. Um, so let me just show you something about productivity and how much time we're actually working. I'm just gonna go into edit mode for a second. This is what we tend to think is going on. We think the, the greater percentage of our time that we're working, the more productive we are. But this is not actually how this works. What's really going on is as we get to our maximum amount of time working, our productivity starts to go down because we're tired, because our brain doesn't work as well, and because we can't take advantage of opportunities that are coming because there's no time to add anything in. And the other thing is um, right at the tail end here, actually, when we're resting, we're actually being more productive than we think. Um, resting your brain 
is so critical for being able to solve problems. I can't tell you how many times I've allowed myself to rest overnight or over a weekend. And towards the end of that weekend, I'll have created a million solutions, not a million, but at least a few solutions to problems that had been really been an issue for a while. So if you think that 25% of your time is going into the pandemic, realize that you now have 75% of your time left for everything else and adjust what's on your plate so that you are somewhere in here getting enough rest um, and not completely over capacity. And as soon as you do, your productivity is going to go way up. Um, whoops, that's not what I meant to click. So <clears throat> center yourself. That's step one. Step two is get organized. If you are a leader in any way in your organization, officially or unofficially, you have a new role here. And that role is to organize the facts, dispel misinformation, um, make sure that your team is operating off of facts. Get your team organized, get your team meeting. If you're all of a sudden working from home, have a daily meeting, bring everybody together. Do not just say, okay, we're all home. You know, there isn't much to do. This is the time to act and it will actually help people. So bring your, organize your team and organize your priorities. Get things in order of which is the most important and start working on the most important things first. So center yourself, organize, then visualize what done looks like, visualize what success looks like, do you have enough money coming in? Do you have a huge group of supporters? Really get clear in your mind's eye on what that looks like. And if you're working with a team, write your vision down together. So center yourself, get organized, visualize success, and then imagine ways to get there. One of the great things about this moment um, is that there are opportunities to do things in brand new ways. This is the time to really activate your imagination and think of out of the box solutions. Get creative and bring that team together to help you with this. But don't take too long worrying about what the best way to go is. Decide on a solution. This is the time to be decisive and try something. Take action because there are opportun the, the context of the world is changing quickly. So you've got to take action quickly. So it's important to be decisive, make that decision and, um, and try it. And if it doesn't work, then you're going to center yourself, organize, visualize that solution again. Maybe you've learned something. You're going to imagine another possibility and you're going to decide to do one of those solutions. And here's my list of 19 almost. I made it to 16 um, before we had to start. I have to tell you, I have been so busy. These days have been filled for me with meeting after meeting. Um, but we can fill in the rest. Uh, feel free to put them into chat. Um, 19 opportunities that are available right now, or for many people, these are available. One, your team might have extra time on their hands. That means you can finally do some of the things that you didn't have time to do before that you know you've needed to do. There are loans with very low interest rates that you could be taking advantage of. Grants that are now have a greater return on the time and energy you have to put into them. Some grants, there are more grants available for general funding. Some foundations are lowering their restrictions on reporting. Um, so that's great. There are lowered expectations overall from you. So it's a great time to take a risk and try something new because people aren't going to be hard on you if it doesn't work out. Just try again. Um, all eyes are on COVID. It says new, but that should say news. This is your chance to be a reporter. You each have a specific 
knowledge of how this pandemic is affecting the people you serve. And people are going to want to know that. So even if it's not the right time to ask for money, you can be engaging your donor base and everybody who's a part of your larger community by sharing the news, the perspective of what's going on that you can see uniquely because of your organization. Um, it will be harder for many of people to focus. So if you're on this webinar right now, I have just given you the COVID acronym version of how to focus and move forward. And if you do that, you will make more progress than most people because a lot of people are distracted right now. Extraordinary times can make for extraordinary relationships and building relationships is so important for every nonprofit and for us as human beings. Lots of providers are offering free sources. Even more providers are offering reduced pricing. I'm actually offering um, a mastermind right now for almost nothing. I was gonna charge nothing, but I decided to charge just enough to have people skin in the game. I'll tell you about that later if you wanna know about it. Um, lots of providers, oh, sorry, it's easier to think out of the box when the box was just thrown away. A lot of the rules were just thrown away. So you can come up with creative ideas right now. Um, change, the momentum for change has already happened. You don't have to start change. You just need to nudge it in the direction you want to go right now. Some nonprofits sadly will go under, but they will leave resources that you can scoop up. They have donor bases, they have communications, they have things, you know, gaps and services that will need to be filled. Um, don't just say goodbye, sad nonprofit, I'm sorry you're leaving. Take advantage, don't let what remains go to waste. Take advantage of that. Um, high unemployment rate means you can get a higher value candidate for your money if you're hiring right now. Choices that were hard before are going to seem like easy choices now because there are other choices that are way harder. Major donors may have um, divested from the markets. I just was on a podcast and um, the host was telling me they have um, a nonprofit they know. One of their donors heavily invested in the stock market, just divested and um, gave the nonprofit over $100,000. So, um, you know, those opportunities are here right now. People need purpose and focus, and you can provide that for them. Um, I have another suggestion in the chat. People who never would have used technology are learning it, allowing, yes, things like this. That's so true. Um, and for many nonprofits have been pushed out of that old model of doing galas, which actually isn't the best way to fundraise, and into um, the new world of digital fundraising and just focusing on building your donor base, which is super important right now. Um, so I will let you guys think about what 17, 18, and 19 are. If you're watching this on a replay, please make sure you put your suggestion into the comment. Um, and let's talk about why, why the COVID um, acronym works. And it works because it forces you to focus. And when you focus, you will gain clarity. And when you, gain when you gain clarity, you will gain perspective. And when you gain perspective, you will gain certainty. And when you are certain, you will feel secure. But another thing will happen. People will trust you, your donors will trust you, and you'll be able to trust in them to help you through this time. People trust people who are certain, who come to, an, who approach a situation with certainty. So use the new COVID acronym, center yourself, organize, visualize, imagine, and decide so that you can have focus, to gain clarity, to get perspective, and to gain certainty. Um, as I said, I too am offering um, something that I would normally charge a lot of money for or might not even um, offer for at all in my time. Um, I have no idea what these words are, um, but it is a mastermind group where I will help you solve 
um, your challenges, turn negativities into positivities, and we'll work together. There's only room for about 12 people. Um, you can go to pivotground.com forward slash mastermind to enroll. It's basically a pay what you can um, program with a minimum fee of $25. So if you would like to be getting support and really working through your issues, um, not just consuming freebies, um, you can join us. We meet twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays from uh, 3.30 to 4.30 Eastern time. So I encourage you to join if you'd like that help.